You're listening to the Small Business Talk podcast with Kathy Smith. Welcome to Small Business Talk, episode 152. Today, my guest is Darcy Luma. Welcome, Darcy. Thank you. Great to be here, Kathy. And we're going to be talking about six hurdles that sabotage success. Now, we don't want any success to be sabotaged. So can you give us a two-minute spiel of who you are, Darcy, and how you can help us? I'd love to. So I am a leadership coach, an executive coach. I do professional speaking, consulting, training, and everything my firm does is around creating high-performing people and teams. And we solve people problems, which uh, really is one of the biggest obstacles to success. Sometimes it's problems where we get in our own way, and sometimes it's problems where we have in relationship with others. Absolutely. I've been on the receiving end of both of those throughout my career, (laughs) so totally know how to do it. And sometimes it's us putting hurdles in front of ourselves because the other person doesn't even see it that way. Yes. A lot of times I find with, I mean, I've been coaching now for 15 years and I find both for my clients and for myself that some of the biggest hurdles are where we get in our own way. And we've got this, uh, what I call inner trash talk that, you know, sabotages uh, our, our success and prevents us from really setting healthy boundaries and from being able to find the success that we want. Absolutely. So what would you suggest to the audience would be a a good way to start to be looking at these six hurdles? Well, there's a lot of ways we can start. I I think to, to that question, Kathy, what I would suggest is if you'd like, I can give an overview of what the the six hurdles are and uh, see if that resonates with any of of your fans and your audience basically the hurdles were developed after years of research i have coached thousands of hours i'm a master certified coach with the international coach federation and thank i started us. to note yeah thank you <laughs> i i started to notice that every client was bringing in similar problems to our coaching sessions. And so I spent a couple of years just really categorizing and documenting what those problems are. Many of them were, they had different details, different players, different flavors, but the core problems, it turns out, were the same no matter if it was an executive, a small business owner, a stay-at-home mom. And so that's what the Thoughtfully Fit model was designed around is these six hurdles and there's six practices to be thoughtfully fit. Three of them are internal where we get in our own way and three of them are external where we have challenges and obstacles with other people. So would that be a good place to just give a a tiny Absolutely. Yes, let's go from there. Perfect. So the, the, the three internal obstacles where we get in our own way. So the first one, there is so much to do. I can't even think of clients that come in and they're overwhelmed. And this aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of stillness, which is about being able to quiet the mind. And that is all about setting boundaries, saying no, and creating healthy routines and discipline around your day so that you do have some stillness. Um, Because just like when you're physically fit, if you want to be physically fit, you have to take rest days to be stronger in the same way. If you want to handle yourself thoughtfully, you need to have stillness. Absolutely. And especially if you're an introvert, you need to have non-people time. Yes, indeed. And even extroverts as well, but most certainly introverts need that time to recharge their batteries. For sure. So the second hurdle is I don't always handle myself the way I'd like. 
So clients would come in and they'd say, oh, Darcy, I got home from a really crazy day. I was driving, the traffic was horrible. I had a bad call and I walked in through the garage door and tripped over some shoes and I just started spewing all that negativity to my unsuspecting family. And a lot of times they were saying, I could, I could see myself and feel myself doing it, but I couldn't stop in the moment. That is the hurdle that aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of strength. And strength is about being able to consciously choose how you show up in that any thing. situation, right? That and sometimes it takes a heavy lift to be able to choose how you show up instead of just being on autopilot. I'm exhausted, so I'm going to be impatient with people. I love that. That's a really good one that people get the choice to choose. Yes. And then the third internal obstacle, clients will come in to coaching sessions saying, I feel stuck. They would be stuck in a job that's not fulfilling, stuck in a marriage that no longer brings joy, stuck in a project, whatever it was. Clients come in to coaching feeling stuck. And so this aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of endurance, which is about being able to overcome obstacles, to get unstuck. And, and it's about being able to embrace a growth mindset to say, okay, I don't know how to handle this yet, but I can overcome it if I want to and if I put my mind to it. I love that. Once again, back to choices. Yes, exactly. And then there's three external. So uh, the first challenge hurdle clients would bring in was some version of I'd be fine if only you were different, right? If only somebody, if, if only my boss would smile when they walk in or come into the Zoom room, if only my spouse would do their fair share without me having to tell them, if somebody else would change how they behave, I could be happy. And of course, right? Because that's, that's natural to feel that way. And yet that hurdle gets in the way because you put, you spend all this time and energy trying to get somebody else to change or be different or be the way you think they should be. And so that is aligned with the thoughtfully fit practice of flexibility. And that's about being able to stretch to accept others just as they are, even if they aren't the way you think they should be. Or if you can't accept them how they are, can you at least stretch to accept the fact that you can't change them? Yeah, that's wonderful. I've just recently been listening to the audio of um, extreme ownership and how you need to own those kind of feelings and the way you deal with it. And that is just absolutely sensational. It's um, by two Navy SEALs. Um, I listened to it on the audio because it, it's quite heavy because they talk about their um, times in um Iraq and how they 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 start with a like a war scene and then they have a lesson and then they have how to apply it to business so by listening to the audio I could have it like as a, a movie where I couldn't see the pictures and I could delve down the pictures um, but it's it's really really good even if you're not into that sort of scene that the way that they describe what happens and then how the lesson is, and then how you can apply it to business. If you haven't had a look at it, it's definitely a book worth looking at. Kathy, I just wrote it down. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's by Jocko Willing. So, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So then the, the fifth hurdle is um, the clients will come in and say, I have relationships that don't work professional or personal relationships. And that aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of balance. And, and when your relationships are out of balance, oftentimes one person is over-functioning and the other is under-functioning. Or maybe somebody is saying, oh, it's okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let them know that, that that didn't feel good. And so you're constantly losing and the other person wins, which in the short term might work, but for the long term, it, it doesn't. It creates resentment. Yes. Or maybe you're the type of person that's that high D dominant on the disc profile and, and you say, I'm going to get my way. I'm going to tell them what I need and you win in the moment. But over the long term, that relationship suffers. So that is all about balance and trying to find achieve alignment and get the win win in the relationship. Yes. And that's very important, isn't it? To, to realize that 
Some people just don't perceive you the same as you perceive them. And sometimes you don't perceive people the way they're intending it. Absolutely. And relationships are the core of any strong business that, that it, whether it's with customers, with clients, with vendors, with colleagues, with direct reports. And so when your relationships are out of balance, it doesn't create that highest performing relationship for the long term. No. And we spend so much time at work, whether it is now, sometimes we're working from home and that sort of thing. And on these Zoom meetings, if you're not happy in your relationships with work, then most of your life, you're not going to be happy. And that's not a good place to be. Yes. Absolutely. And that leads us then to the, the final hurdle where clients would come into a, a, a coaching conversation and say, oh my gosh, I was blindsided and I did not handle it well. And so they're reacting poorly when, when, when they're blindsided, when they're caught off guard, when somebody in the board meeting uh, you know, blames them for something. And instead of taking a breath and pausing to think about how they want to respond, they overreact. And now not only do they have the mess of that initial situation, they now have the mess that they have to clean up from not handling themselves thoughtfully in the moment. And so that aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of agility, which is about being able to respond effectively instead of reacting unconsciously when you are blindsided. Perfect. So can you run through those six, the, the names of those yes, again for us? Absolutely. So stillness, strength, and endurance. Those are the first three that are internal. And then flexibility, balance, and agility are the three that are external. Perfect. And do you find that sometimes people have more internal than external or it's a bit of a mix or they only present with one generally? That's a, uh, a great question. So I would say that um, depending on who you are, you have different challenges. Some people have no problem with stillness. They're an introvert. They love creating space. That is really solid, but they are struggling with having agility and handling themselves well in a situation where they're caught off guard. So I find that most clients do have some where they are strong and others where they feel like they need to um, really strengthen that muscle. Not unlike if you're physically fit, you might be a, a, a strong sprinter, but you can't do an endurance event, or you might be really good at stretching and you're flexible, but you cannot uh, lift weights. The good news is that similar to being physically fit, you can train and practice and handle yourself thoughtfully in all six of these areas, if that's what you'd like. Perfect. So where would you suggest that people start if they're thinking, now nah, one resonates with me or I'm not quite sure which one resonates with me? Well, one of the things they can do is if they go to thoughtfullyfit.com, we've got a free quiz. It's two or three minutes and they can take the quiz and it will tell you which is your biggest hurdle. Which one do you struggle most with? And then what are some strategies that you can use to overcome and to clear that hurdle? And these are the strategies that I use with my coaching clients and that I used to de de develop the, the Thoughtfully Fit book. Similar to the, the book you were talking about, Extreme Ownership. After I solidified these six practices and this model, um, I decided I, I want to write a book and, and I want to share it with the world so that people can coach themselves. Um, and in my case, the, the model was finalized on a Saturday in March. And for me personally, it was, it was, well, it was five days later when I got a phone call from my neighbor and she said, Darcy, what is going on at your house? I said, I, I don't know. I'm not at home. Why? And she said, there's 50 or 60 police cars and a SWAT team with guns. And they just took your husband out in handcuffs. Uh oh. <laughs> and that created the beginning of the biggest nightmare I've ever had. And I had to hire an attorney because my, my husband 
was arrested for sexual assault of a minor he had met online and the charges were severe. And so I had to hire my own attorney and my attorney said, Darcy, don't talk to anybody about anything. And all of a sudden I became ground zero to test drive this thoughtfully fit model that I had just finalized five days earlier. And so in the book, I talk about how it helped me when I had more people problems and, and, and challenges and hurdles than I ever had. And then with some case studies on how clients used it in business to overcome their hurdles. Yes, well, lucky that you had been doing that work because that would challenge the best of us. It, it really was, Kathy. I mean, had that happened 10 years earlier, I'm quite certain I would not have come out the other side uh, or that my daughter or, or, or been a present mom to help my, my two young daughters to, to come through that. My husband was a full-time stay-at-home dad. He did everything with them and their lives were, were destroyed with that phone call. And because of thoughtfully fit, I was able to work through that. And, and when you say, where, where do you start at the core of the model? So we talked about those six hurdles at the core of the model are three simple steps that help you deal with any hurdle. Can, can, could I yes, quickly share what absolutely. those are? Absolutely. So the core, right, that's what's most important. If you're going to be physically fit, you need to build your core and you'll be stronger. And no matter what the activity you're doing, you'll be less likely to get injured. And so at the core of Thoughtfully Fit is where you're able to explore your choices and to identify what you control. And it's three steps. Pause, think, act. Many of my clients, I find, would come into coaching and they'd say, you know, I, I acted impulsively and, you know, did it backwards. And then I paused to think, oh, I didn't handle myself well. And so with my husband's arrest, when, when I got a call from another mom that said, if there's any pictures of my daughter, uh, you know, they find any pictures of her, I'm sending the mafia to your house. In that moment, I was triggered. I mean, it, it was, I was blindsided and caught off guard. And, and instead of lashing out in, in, in anger, I was able in that moment to pause, to take a breath and to think, she's scared. Her daughter was at our house under my husband's, ex-husband's care. This isn't personal to me. And with pausing and thinking, then I could act more thoughtfully. And, and, and instead of overreacting and sabotaging that relationship, I could say, oh, I, I understand you're scared, you know, and, and not add fuel to the fire of that conversation. Yes, and I think that's where we quite often lack, isn't it? We just, it reacts, so it must be against us. So therefore we act. Whereas if we just stop for a second, think, let that adrenaline drop just a little bit, then we can actually make an informed decision. Yes, exactly. And it's interesting that you, 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 you said stop, right? When you think about, I, I always talk about the pause is like a stop sign. And if you're driving and you get to a stop sign, you don't stop and take out your lunchbox and open your laptop and respond to emails. You just stop and you raise your awareness and proceed then in the same way, if you can pause in that moment, it may be taking a deep breath. It may be counting to three, doing just enough to stop that autopilot, unconscious, reactive, impulsive response. Pause in the moment, take a breath and then think. And that's where you can ask yourself some thoughtful questions, which is really why I designed this model because these clients were coming in with these, with these hurdles, right? And I would later see clients at the, at the grocery store and they'd say, Darcy, I had this challenge and I was going to call you because I really didn't know. And I thought, wait a minute, what would Darcy do? What would, she would ask me some questions. What would Darcy ask me? She'd ask me what's hard about this and what's the ideal outcome and how could I move towards that outcome and what's getting in the way of that. And all of a sudden I had this new awareness so that I could move forward. That's what I wanted to put together in, the, in this book and in the model is how to help anybody have access to the power of coaching in that moment to be able to coach themselves, to, to hit the pause button, to think and ask yourself those thoughtful questions so that you can then act more thoughtfully. Perfect. So in Australia, uh, with our stop signs, we have to stop for three seconds. So we have to stop so the wheels stop moving. So Are you kidding? No. No, 
That Three is seconds. fascinating. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. There you go. With our global world, we'd get to learn all sorts of little tidbits. That, I mean, and I'm fascinated because a lot of times people will hear, we'll do a rolling stop and there isn't that awareness. Um, and so there's something that what you just said, Kathy, that pause, you know, hitting a stop sign for three seconds to give the space to yes. raise your awareness. I love that. Perfect. So we've stopped, we've raised our awareness. Now we're thinking about how we can react. So what yeah. should we be doing now that we've made that conscious decision that we're actually going to think before we act? What would you suggest people do then? Yes, in that moment, it's, it's essential that you ask yourself some questions and figure out what, what's hard about this. What do I need to do to overcome that obstacle? What's the ideal outcome? Um, in that moment with the mafia mom, I thankfully was able to pause and think in the moment to access the awareness that she's scared. If I hadn't, I was attacked. I mean, that was a full blown attack and I would have attacked back. Many of us have an autopilot response. If we're attacked, we, we attack back, we shut down, we stone wall, we cry. In this case, when you can pause to think and ask yourself some thoughtful questions, then you can have a more thoughtful response. And what's key is then that you have to do all three in order, right? So you can't sort of cycle in the think and think and think and rethink and come up with a plan and a new plan. You then do have to act. And that's key if somebody's in a right of relationship that's challenging and they they feel like, okay, I have to say something. I, I can't just keep continue to be steamrolled. And so they they pause and think and they create their talking points and get really clear. But then a week goes by. Well, you know what? It's not that bad. I'm not going to, or I'm not ready. Or maybe I should say something. They kind of keep cycling in the think. You do have to then act and take the step to move forward. You can't just stall out in that analysis paralysis. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck, isn't it? They, they role pay it to such a degree that they go, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. And then, of course, another week later, it happens again. And then it suddenly becomes bigger and bigger. And before they know it, they've got a real problem because they didn't actually act in that first or second instance. That's exactly right. And we call that the buoy effect. So if you're in a lake and you've got this buoy and you push it down. So it's like, well, they said something that made me angry. It, I'm not going to say anything. It's okay. They didn't mean it. And you keep pushing and suppressing it instead of saying, hey, ouch, that hurt. You know, can we talk about that? You keep suppressing it all of a sudden in a moment uh, when you are least expecting it. And in a forceful way, you break. And then you're screaming at, at them for something because you, it's been, the pressure's been building up. Yes, the straw that broke the camel's back. It wasn't actually the straw. It was all the things that happened previously. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's why you do all three. You pause and think, but then you have to act. And then after you act, you can pause and think, how did that go? What did I do well? What do I need to go back and do any repair bids? Uh, maybe, maybe I didn't handle it as well as I want, right? So that you can kind of keep on raising your awareness and acting thoughtfully. Wonderful. So I love that idea of making sure that you do follow through for all three, because yeah, well, without one of them, of course, the, the cogs are going to break. Okay, so we've, we've realized where our issues are. We've stopped. We've thought and we've now acted, what other tips would you have for the audience? Yeah, so when, the, to me, what's really critical, and one of the things that's powerful about coaching is being able to create awareness of where do you get triggered and where do you get stuck? So, so for one person, maybe they recognize that um, they're overwhelmed there's so much to do, they can't even think. And that awareness they start to dig into is because they don't feel okay saying no. And those thoughts, right? We oftentimes, something happens and we have a thought. And that thought either serves us or sabotages us. So let's say, Kathy, somebody um, emails you and says, oh, Kathy, you're on the um, board for this nonprofit 
and we really need you to chair the fundraising committee. The next meeting is on, on Thursday night at seven. And so you just kind of on autopilot, look at your calendar, you reply yes, and put it in your calendar. And then Thursday night comes and you're like, oh, dang, why did I do that? Well, a lot of times the first thought is if I say no, they won't like me. Or if I don't do this, they'll think I don't care about this organization. And that thought can sabotage us. And then as a result, you say yes. And then you're overwhelmed. Your calendar is, is, is overflowing. And so that's where the other tip that I have is to pay attention to that first thought. And if it's sabotaging you, don't act on it. And in this case, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I work on with clients, if, if it's hard to say no, so I always have a coach and I used to struggle with saying no. And, and you know, there's this notion that no is a, is a full sentence. Well, that to me feels so harsh. Like to just say no, it doesn't honor the relationship. It feels mean. I made up this story and had all these thoughts about that. And so for me, one of the things that I recognized is that I need to be able to deliver the no in a compassionate way that works for me. And so that might be saying, not me, not this, or not yet. So they ask, you know, can you chair the fundraising committee? Oh, I, you know, I can't, I'm a single mom. I have two daughters, so I can't, but you know what? I have somebody who I just had breakfast with is looking for some servant leadership. I'd love, could I connect with you and see if that might be the right fit, right? So not me, not this. It might be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a, a, a really important committee. I can't dedicate the time that's needed for this right now, but I would love to write a checkout and have it be your first donation. Or it could be not yet oh my gosh, I would love to. It sounds like a, something I'm really passionate about. This stage of my life, because my daughters aren't driving and I am a single mom, I can't, but I would love to revisit this with you in a couple of years when they're graduated and I have some more space. And so to me, that feels like a more compassionate way to be able to, to say, no, that has really helped me personally to have more white space on my calendar because I was in a place where I was struggling and had adrenal fatigue syndrome. And I noticed that same hurdle with a lot of, a lot of my clients. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people struggle with the fact that no doesn't end with an S. No, 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 yes. And then suddenly it becomes a yes rather than a no. And yeah. yes, no is a full sentence, but it's very, very difficult to use. So I like those those three different options there. So that is perfect. And that's it. Sometimes it is a case of giving money, sometimes a case of giving time, and sometimes it's a case of giving another option. So it's the same when you get um, work requests and if you're running your own business and it doesn't fit, sometimes it's just far better to refer them to somebody else. They don't necessarily need to work with you, but they need the next step. And the next step might be go and see my colleague down the road because they look like they'd be a much better fit for you. What a, what a perfect translation to small business owners because it can, I mean, I know when I started my business, I was saying yes to everybody, any client. I was trying to build my business. That, it's like what got you here won't get you there. I had to start to learn how to refer clients to others because I wasn't doing my best and highest work because I was overwhelmed saying yes to things that weren't the perfect fit. Yes. And, and that, that's hard. That could be scary to say no or not me or not this. Yes, it certainly can. And that's what people say. I can work with everyone. Yes, you can, but you shouldn't because there are certain people that are actually going to cost you money. If it's not in your core business and you're having to rearrange your team and your resources to make that fit into your core business, then nine times out of 10, that's actually going to be a, a derailing sabotage and it's actually going to cost you money trying to accommodate that person. So for their sake and your sake, it's far better to refer them to a trusted colleague. Yes, and, and that that's something like with, with my company, we've really worked hard to have the discipline because what we realized, if, if you say yes to a client that is not the perfect client, you are saying no to being able to do outreach 
and relationship building and sales and marketing to attract and, and, and really work with those perfect clients. It's a trade-off always. Yes, it is. And sometimes the, the trade-off is not so good. So the scales end up far yeah. worse down the, the end. And generally it's yourself that will be the, the one that doesn't benefit. So um, yes, you need to be aware of your energies, your time, and that you're not for everybody. Yes. I, and I and I think, you know, that was another thing that we've gotten really clear on with, with Thoughtfully Fit. We are not about taking somebody and trying to convince them that they need to be able to train and practice to handle themselves thoughtfully. If, if that is not in your agenda, that's fine. Just like you can't really effectively train somebody who is a couch potato and happy to be a couch potato to say, go, go do a marathon. So we really have been very disciplined to say, we want to take and work with people who want to be thoughtfully fit. And that to me is a, a, a discipline in and of itself to be able to put yourself out there and recognize you're not for everybody. And that's okay. It is absolutely okay. And that will make it a far better service for yourself and for your clients. Yes. Yes. And that, I don't know, Kathy, about you, but for me, that was a hard lesson to learn. And now be on the other side, we just had, in the last month was our highest performing month ever. And we said no to a lot. Well done. Because it created more space then for saying yes to the, the, the perfect work. Perfect. Excellent. So wrapping this up, what would you suggest that our audience should be looking at to be thoughtfully fit and to be trying to overcome some of these hurdles? Yeah, I, I'd say two things. One is you can start training immediately. You can start to engage your core and build your core immediately. So you finish listening to this and uh, you know, you're, you're, you're driving to the grocery store and somebody cuts you off. And that immediate reaction is to, you know, flip them off. I don't know in Australia what the, <laughs> what, what, what it would be here. Somebody would kind of flip you off. Right. Um, and instead pause and think, do I really want to give my negative energy to them? Do I really want to potentially have a road rage incident? Do I, but huh, no, I'm just going to wave them along and let them get in and act thoughtfully and just let go of that. There are opportunities multiple times a day, every day to be able to engage your core, to pause and think before you act. And just like if you want to have a strong physical core, you can't just do 10 sit-ups once a month. You need to be consistent and train and practice. So right now, just start to strengthen the muscle to hit the pause button. Think, ask yourself some questions before you act. And then the second tip I would have would, would be to invite people to go to thoughtfullyfit.com so that you can take the quiz and identify which is the biggest hurdle and be able to identify some strategies. And there are also are the, all the links. If anybody wants to go deeper with any of the, the hurdles, you can buy the book uh, or, the, or listen to it on Audible there as well. Perfect. So we'll put those in the show notes. And I love the, the road rage um, example. I always just sort of think about what's happened in that person's day. Why are they upset? They've obviously not had a good day and I'm not going to make it worse for them. Yes, those are some beautiful examples of thoughtful questions you can ask in the think so that you then can really act thoughtfully instead of being on this knee-jerk reaction that fuels the fire and the flame. Fabulous. And that leads perfectly, nice segue, into our five final questions. Are you game, Darcy? I am game. Oh, exciting. What is the best advice given to you by a mentor? Pay attention to your energy and what, how you want to build your business. When, when I first started, for instance, uh, everybody was saying, you need a podcast, you need a podcast. And I'm like, ah, ah. And my mentor said, do you want a podcast? I'm like, no. Well, then you build your business based on your passion and your energy, not because of what other people said. Is that a fabulous way to connect with people? Absolutely. If it's not right for you, let it go. That was really freeing advice for me. Yes. And I think that is so true because everybody hears of all these fabulous opportunities, these fabulous things you could do, and then they spread themselves so thin 
that they're not doing anything very well. And then it gets to the point where they really don't want to get out of bed because, oh, I've got to do X that days. So yes, be true to yourself. Yes. Oh, you just bottom lined it beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're supposed to be answering the questions, not me, but that's okay. <laughs> what is the biggest help you have received since starting your business? Hmm. When my husband was arrested, my community, my team, my neighbors, my church just activated and, and helped. My sister, I, I, my daughters um, were uh, young and my husband's mugshot was all over the news and newspapers and social media. My sister uh, offered, suggested that I move my daughters to her house in another state five hours away. She, I gave her legal guardianship while I dealt with the, the immense uh, nightmare that I found myself in. I can't even describe the help that I received on, um, on so many levels at that point in my life. Fabulous. And it's great how community rallies around and helps in those absolutely awful situations. So yes. what is the one thing that you have to do every day, your non-negotiable? Um, Every day I plan out my three meals for the day. Um, it's non-negotiable. I eat three pounds of vegetables and fruit a day. It just, I feel better. I function better when I am very intentional on how I feel my body. Fabulous. What is your favorite business book and why? Oh, gosh, you can have two. I have, so, I have so many. You can have two. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I, I said one of my favorites is the um, the five dysfunctions of a team. I love that it is research based, and a lot of what we do is work with teams, and it outlines so clearly what gets in the way. And then I also love Good to Great um, by Jim Collins, and and again also because it's research based and it talks about what did companies do that went from good to great where other companies of similar size and similar industries did not make that transition. And so th th those are two that come to mind. Perfect. And what is the, um, what do you wish you had known when you started out? My business? Yep. Hmm. I, I probably would have wished that I had known. I, I, I mean, oh gosh, there's so many things I can give uh, for an answer. We we use a, a model called traction to, on how to run our business. I, I wish I had known that I didn't. I don't have to do it at all. At all, and and I, I wish that I, I had known to get really clear on what's what are our rocks. For, for right now, for this year, and not try to just do everything a little bit. The, 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 the discipline we have now to identifying, we've got our 10-year vision, and then our three-year goals, and our one-year goals, and then we have our quarterly rocks, and then every Monday, we have a level 10 meeting where we are identifying, are, we, are our rocks for this quarter on track or off track? I wish I had known that system to be able to ha have a structure on how to run my business. Fabulous. And that is a perfect way to end this podcast. So we thank you so much for your time, Darcy, and we will put those links in the show notes so that people can contact you. Thank you so much, Kathy. It is a delight and a pleasure to be with you. Excellent. And SBT audience, enjoy your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to Small Business Talk podcast and head on over to smallbusinesstalk.com.au forward slash downloads for all the show notes and links to this episode. Remember, to be great, you must start. Pick one tip from today's episode, take action and implement it. Let's meet again next week at the same time and place. Until then, take action. And SBT community, enjoy your journey.